In this episode of Full Droop TV, we get the bed liner sprayed in and fabricate a rear bumper out of plate steel for Project F-150. Full Droop TV starts now. This episode of Full Droop TV is brought to you in part by KC Highlights. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Full Droop TV. In our last episode, you saw us fabricate this front bumper on our F-150. Well, today we're going to be moving to the rear of the truck to fabricate our rear bumper. Now, this one, we used a lot of tube steel and flat plate. Well, on the rear bumper, we're going to be making the whole bumper out of just plate steel. Now, to add the styling that we're looking for, we're going to also be incorporating some flared holes using our dimple die set we got from Pacific Customs. Now, before we get started on our bumper, we're going to head over to For the Truck, one of the top five Line X dealers in the country. And we're going to show you the process of what it takes to spray in a bed liner in your truck. So, we're going to take our F 150 project and Silverado project over there to get Line X. The process from start to finish, as soon as the truck gets pulled into the time we're done on a standard uh, six and a half foot to eight foot uh, truck bed, is an hour and a half from sanding, prep, spray only takes about 15 minutes. As soon as we're done spraying, it's cured, hard, ready to, for us to pull the paper off, pull it around for the customer. A uh, truck that's basically with factory paint, jitter sand it all down, not take the paint off, but get rid of the sheen on there. That way we have a nice bite for the Line X liner to grab onto, but we're not taking it down to the metal to where we could have rust prone if it does get a deep gouge or anything like that that would prevent it from crawling underneath the liner. So the correct application definitely is to just sand the surface enough to where it grabs, prep it all out, we use a wire trim tape for the edges, no knives or anything to cut it up, so it looks great when it's done. Nice tight even texture to the whole thing. The material is going to be about 120 mils thickness, which is a Line-X industry standard. Definitely thicker than the other guys, which puts us above an eighth inch thick. It also has a tensile strength that's about 300 times as strong as the competition. So when this stuff's done, which is a one-to-one -one chemical, not two-to-one like the other guys, and it's a pure polyurea, not polyurethane, it will be super hard and last a lifetime. And Linex stands behind that and they guarantee for the lifetime of the vehicle. You know, you don't want to go throw bricks in it right after you pick it up from here. Uh, you definitely wait 24 hours till it's totally cured, but any light stuff is ready to go immediately, like a light ice chest, you can walk in the back of it. Uh, you know, it's completely dry. We do everything from, uh, you know, bedsides, fender wells, We've done the interior of several Jeeps. We've done the whole exterior of Jeeps and trucks. Um, stuff that's not even related, toolboxes, you know, speaker boxes, all kinds of things. Colors sets us apart. It's a big thing that Line-X does correctly that the other guys don't. Um, it's UV stable. We use a polyaspartic top coat that we can add metallic flake to and get the exact vehicle color match. So, where the other guys have failed in that and the colors change and turn, Line-X guarantees that it'll stay that exact color to the OEM paint for the lifetime of the vehicle. It's something new that they put a lot of time and effort in to make correctly and uh, sets us apart from the other guys big time. If you got an old bed liner that's either been sprayed by us and it's faded out, gouged up, uh, you know, whatever the case is, or another competition, uh, then what we do is we, we have a renew process that Linex came out with. You know, we pressure wash any of the grease and dirt out of the bed, rough it up a little, primer the whole bed, and come back and do a light texture and a UV stable top coat, and it'll look like brand new when we're done. We call it a facelift to your old bed liner. We got our F-150 and Silverado back from for the truck, and you can see they did an amazing job. We couldn't be happier with the results. The Line-X product is one of the best bedliner products on the market and for the truck's attention to detail is unmatched by a lot of installers. You can see they even took the time to remove all of our bed bolts before they did their spray. So it's no wonder that they're one of the top five Line-X dealers in the country. 
Well, now that our bed liner is complete, let's get going on our bumper. Today I'm going to be fabricating a rear bumper for the F-150. If you watched our last episode, I built a 100% bolt-on front bumper that utilized all the holes in the factory frame for mounting. So keeping with that same theme, I'm going to be doing the same in the back. I'm going to use this hole and this hole here on each side of the frame. So all this extra frame rail it needs to be cut off because we want to increase our ground clearance. So that's the first step in building this rear bumper. Use masking tape to mark a straight line along the frame. Using a silver marker will show up better against the black frame. Remove the tape to reveal your line. We chose to use our Everlast plasma cutter to make it faster to cut off this frame. For our mounting plates, I'm going to be doing a piece that's six inches wide and six and a half inches long. I'm going to mark that out on my steel and I'll get it cut out. I've marked the holes where I'm going to be drilling to create this mounting point. I'm going to drill out both of these locations. I'm going to slide in a bolt from the back side and weld it in to create our mounting point. Now that I have these pieces bolted into the frame, I've cut out an additional plate that's going to go up against this magnet to keep it square, and it's going to come out away from the back of the truck. This is going to serve as the foundation for the top plate that I'm going to make next. And I left it long so I can trim off the excess because I don't know the exact angle or pitch that I want to put on the back of the bumper yet. I'm marking out each hole that we're going to cut into this top plate using this Blair Equipment Company hole cutter. Then we'll be using this Pacific Customs dimple die set to flare holes across the top section.
we decided to run our top plate with the flared holes facing up. That way it creates a tread-like surface so that when we're getting in and out of the truck, we're not gonna slip on our bumper. For the back plate of our rear bumper, I've done a basic layout where we're gonna be mounting our license plate in this center section. And we're also gonna be cutting out this area here that I have marked to mount our KC Highlights LED cubes. We're gonna tuck them inside the bumper so the light actually penetrates through these holes. Now that I have the front plate tacked in place on the correct pitch that I want, I can move on to making the outside templates and cutting off this excess. And the way I'm going to figure out how to do that is I know from this point to somewhere in this area is where I want that other plate to go. So using this plane and this plane here, I'm going to use this piece of poster board, slip it into place laying flat on those two points, and that'll give me the exact line. I can mark it trim that off and I know that I'll have an exact line where I can weld the back side to that plate. With the excess trimmed off, I've cut out a poster board template, which I've taped in place temporarily. I wanted to show you guys where this is going to overlap this lower piece. We're going to trim that off from this point back to the frame mount. I cut out these pieces to use as end caps for the bumper. After I get these tacked in, I'm going to remove the bumper so I can finish all the welds and finish all the boxing on the welding table, just because it'll be easier for me to get around all the corners and curves. Now this mount wouldn't be any good the way it is. We need to fully box these, so that's why I cut out these plates slip in there like that. I'm going to get this tacked in and then I'm going to box the top and bottom section as well. We wanted to add some strength into this panel that we're going to be stepping on a lot with our bumper. So between this boxing plate and this one here, we decided to cut a piece of two inch tubing we're going to slide into that area. It's going to weld into the back side of this plate, 
to give us the strength that we're looking for. We're almost completed with all the welding on the bumper. We've got a couple more things we're gonna add for some additional strength. But before we do, we wanted to mount our Casey Highlights three inch LED cubes. One of the cool features about these lights is you can mount them in any orientation that you want. We're gonna mount ours with the tab facing sideways so we have easier access to the nut. So it's gonna drop in here just like that and mount right through that hole that I cut earlier. With our lights removed, I can get in and finish weld both tabs. I've cut out two pieces that are going to go on either side in this location here to box this area and give it even more strength. Then I'm going to do the same from here all the way over to this side as well. Well, I've got my side pieces tacked in place, and I also cut out the center piece. Once I get it tacked in place, I'm going to tack it all the way around so I don't get any heat distortion or warpage, and then I'll weld everything up and get the bumper back on the truck. FDTV Talk is presented by Pre-Runner Maniac. Welcome to FDTV Talk, where we answer your questions on air. And today's question comes from Brad, and he asks... Hello, this is Brad in Las Vegas with a question for you. My question is, terrain or all-terrain tires? That's a great question, Brad. And both types of tires are going to have their pros and cons. Now, if you go with an all-terrain tire that has a smoother tread pattern, it's going to be a lot quieter on the highway, but you're going to sacrifice traction while you're out in the dirt. Now, if you go with a mud terrain like the ones that we have here, you can see these deep lugs are going to give us all the traction that we need while we're out in the desert, but this traction is going to come at a price. Not only when you're buying the tires, as mud terrains are generally a little bit more expensive than an all-terrain, but they're also going to be noisier and a lot heavier than an all-terrain. 
So I hope that answers your question, Brad. And remember, if you have a question that you want answered on air, visit FullDroopTV.com and click on the FDTV Talk icon. You can see our fabrication is completed on our bumper and it's going to give us all the protection that we need on the back of our F-150. Now these flared holes we put into the top plate are going to give us a bit of traction getting in and out of the bed. And these LED cubes that we got from KC Highlights are going to give us plenty of light when we're out in the desert at night. Since our F-150 has dark tinted windows, these factory reverse lights just aren't going to cut it. Now, in our next episode, we're going to get into the bed of this truck so we can fabricate our bed cage and give us a place to mount our Sway Away 3-2 bypass shocks. This way, our rear suspension will match the front. So until next time, we'll see you in the dirt. On that bumper, we're going to head... <laughs> Linex is one of the best te TED liners. And it's going to create that extra surface weld all these tabs. All these tabs? There's not that many. That's a great question, Brad. Okay. <laughs> vroom, vroom.